What's going on, everybody? Nameless here, and I'm happy to announce today that I am going to be bringing the podcast back, baby. That's right. Uh, I get messages all the time, like, where is the podcast at? Where is it at? Uh, you know, we took a break. Uh, my co-host, Pac-Man, got a job somewhere else. Uh, he wasn't focused as much on competitive Call of Duty. Uh, and, you know, I was working for the CDL, and we have a lot of days where we're live and things like that. So I decided to, you know, put the podcast away. I had finished that chapter after so many episodes, uh, but I want to bring it back. I want to talk more about call of duty outside of the broadcast sort of restraints and have fun on my own personal channel so i'm gonna be bringing on guests here and there whether that be cdl talent other pro players or other people in management in the industry i'm gonna be bringing people on uh but we're gonna focus primarily on competitive call of duty um i have an episode that's done that you guys are gonna see today it's me and bryce tacular if you guys don't know who he who he is he is a caster he has been around forever and a fun fact is he actually was the first person i've ever casted with or did on air talent work with so it feels nice to bring him on uh and yeah i'm gonna be doing the first few podcasts are going to be team previews where i cover a couple of teams headed into this season this one is going to be lag and boston but i'm just so excited to let you guys know that i am bringing it back these first couple episodes will be only on youtube they will just be straight up uh you know vod of me talking about the teams with a guest and then after that we will go back into the live format where we bring in the call-ins and things of that nature uh, i hope you guys support uh, to allow me to keep on doing this but either way i appreciate you guys so much for sticking around uh we've gotten a decent amount of love on these last two youtube videos and i haven't uploaded in a year which is absolutely wild to me so uh, thank you guys. I appreciate you guys. And I'll see you guys in the podcast and the rest of the content to come in the future. Enjoy the video. Leave a like, please. All right. Hello and welcome back to the podcast. We're here today. Uh, bringing it back. We got Bryce Tacular. Me and him are just going to be chatting about some of the teams today. Uh, it should be a good time. The season is literally right around the corner, Bryce. Like it feels like it just snuck up on us, but I'm ready to go. Oh, me too as well. It definitely does feel like it snuck up on us. And I, and this is the great thing. We're now going to talk about all these teams, all this movement we've seen in the offseason. I know, dude. It's going to be wild. Uh, you know, let's just jump into it. Like, uh, there's so many teams to cover. And in this video, uh, we'll do a couple, uh, maybe a third if we're feeling spicy. But uh, I wanted to start things off with LAG. Uh, you know, there's been so many roster changes. Everybody did all their content on that earlier on. Uh, but as the season comes closer and the game has come out, opinions tend to change you know things settle down uh so i wanted to bring up this team you know it's hook spart neptune and arcides uh on lag and uh to kick things off like the big story with this roster i believe i think is is arcides no no longer on phase he's on lag uh and it's sort of a new scenario for him because like he doesn't have simpa bz these champions that he's been dominating with and it's almost like does he have to prove himself again as a leader, as a competitor? Do you feel like that's the case or his narrative going forward? I think, yeah, I think this may be like a redemption. The problem is, you say redemption arc, like I, I think he was good last year, but obviously there good. were issues in that team, mm -hmm. right? Like you are right though. It is a different set of people in front of him. And if anything, I think it's the opposite. I think this will make him shine. Like if RC is as good as we think he is, not having those players in front of him means that he should stand out more on this roster. He still has very good players with him, but I don't think anybody's going to kid themselves that Hugh Spartan Neptune are, you know, Sim Cell and Abizi, right? Like, you're just not going to sit there and pretend that's true. Yeah. So I think, realistically, for, for Arsides, this is the, the moment where he should be shining more on this roster. Yeah, I mean, I think Arsides, the story of FaZe last year, like, they got second so many times, didn't get that championship. And, uh, you know, I think a lot of people would like to see them stick together. I feel like I would like to see them stick together. Um, but, like, I think back to the MW year, the first MW, where FaZe won a, a bunch of chips. You know, they ultimately didn't yeah. win the World Championship. But they still made a roster change. As controversial as that might sound, as that sounded at the time, after having won so many events, they still made a roster change. Now, granted, it did go to 4v4, but they still got rid of two people, right? And they bring in our season. Then that next year in Cold War, what happened, Bryce? They absolutely dominated. So from the side of FaZe, you know, and their management, I can't really question them too much uh, because, you know, as history has shown that they've made the right decisions. Uh, yeah. But obviously, though, that's there was some turmoil, right? And that's one of the questions of like, what must have went down on that FaZe team? Uh, because he was their leader, right? If, if somebody was to get released, I did not think that it was going to be him because he's the guy who sort of like rallied them together and, you know, they won all those chips in Cold War. Uh, but, you know, 
we'll never know, right? So uh, there's some point to dive super deep into that. Uh, more so on this team, he's got similar like play styles around him, right? He's got Hook yeah. and he's got Neptune. And then this is a crazy comparison, I understand, because he's very early in his career, but he has Spart as well, who there are some comparisons you could draw towards Selim in terms of play style, right? Like Spart is a guy who can run both weapons, right? He plays pretty quick. And he's extremely good at search and destroy. You can trust him in his ones in respawn or in search. Um, so given the makeup of the team, I think for Arsty's like, at least he got a W there in terms of roles. Yeah, I think so. I think the LAG roster is, is just really interesting how it's all come together. Because I'm trying to kind of put together how I think you should think about this team. And it's kind of a convoluted mess of storylines, right? Like every single player on this roster has had a bit of controversy with their place in the CDL and their role on various teams. You've got Hugh and all the drama that surrounded him, and then we kept seeing him lock in and, and start to dominate. Spark came in off the sub bench. Uh, nobody expected him to do well at that tournament. MVP walked away with the championship, right? Yeah. Neptune, back and forth out of the challengers. You know, he was kind of put into that New York roster, absolutely just trashed on by people. Yeah, that's like, it's, it's insane. It's no and then he went back in the challenges and dominated, mm -hmm. right? And then you got Arce, who goes out one of the most, let's say, uh, dominant rosters, comes into this team as well. It, it's like this weird mismatch of all of these players can play very, very well, but they've all had hiccups in the last two years, right? Yeah. They've all had that little bit of wavering doubt around them. So this either works or it's a horrible mess in about two months. That's very true. Uh, you know, there's also something to talk about with like RCDs from coming from that dominant roster to this. Um, you know, I don't have all the examples off the top of my hand, but I've dealt with them sort of hands on personally and players as well on my team. When a person goes from being on one of those dominating teams, their very next team, it's hard to find long term success. Uh, I mean, I've been on a team like that, like uh, not to the degree of like what FaZe did, which would only make it harder, you know, to my point. But yeah. I've been on a team that's won a couple of events. I was considered a top two team. And then my very next team, it felt like a nightmare. It was a lot to handle. My team was terrible mm -hmm. and it ended up breaking up. Uh, I've teamed with other guys who were in situations like that, that have then been on my team. Um, and I could just see the frustration, like, because you come from like a culture of winning, you come from a, a a team where it's like you felt like you guys were going to stick together forever because of how good you were and uh you knew how to get out of a certain situation so uh when, when problems arose so for rcd is like i'm super interested to see how he responds to that because my like opinion of him is that he's a strong-minded like strong-willed guy who can team with anybody because when he came up it was not easy to come up like on that united team they had to fight and really just like with three other people who you know weren't doing well in call of duty at the time as well just turned up uh -huh. and like made a name for themselves out of nowhere so i know he has that grit in him uh but these guys like hook and neptune they really need direction so i mean that's another thing that i'm going to be looking at though like how does rcds respond after being on that phase team well you're right this is this is one of the funniest things i think about uh call of duty professional players the the entire idea that oh we've got good vibes we'll get along it's like no 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 mm -hmm. bollocks like <laughs> let's let's put this straight here yeah if you're winning it's easy to have good vibes and be friends if you are losing and you are being hammered on socials and people think you should be dropped and there is pressure and tension in the team some teams survive it but it is the rare rare few a lot of other teams fall to infighting. They get worse. We've seen teams in the CDL give up halfway through the season yeah. because they just can't put it together. Unfortunately, and I have to say this, not every team is a team full of professionals and not all of them will rise to the top when put under that pressure, right? Yeah. It is easy to be happy and feeling good when you are winning. It is very difficult when you are losing and you feel like it's somebody else's fault because every single player that I've really met is a competitor and has some ego behind them. You can't do what you do without having an ego, right? And that ego will get bruised during the year. And like I said, it's an interesting combination, this team. Like I said, they've all had their hiccups. Has that hardened them into diamonds, ready to go into this team and sort out any issues so they don't have those problems again? Or is it a powder keg waiting to happen? I think this is a, is a, a very interesting roster to do, especially with a, with a coach who's coming over from what we knew was a very teamwork-based team, right? Yeah. You remember Marky B's coming over from Ultra. 
he had a team that were all very good friends even now right even when they've they've broken up that roster they're all still talking they're all still having a good time known for their teamwork he's coming into this team can he do it again yeah i think uh you know we've we've heard a lot of things about uh you know who having problems and stuff and you know people saying that maybe he wasn't the best of, of teammates like listening wise the last couple of years there's just been rumors like we've never heard people come out and, and exactly say it uh what the real issue is but we know there's some turmoil between him and his teams and having Marky be there to your point i think is huge right like i know mark really well as do you and he brings the vibes like that guy Whatever mm -hmm. he did with Ultra, it worked, man, because those guys were always having a good time. They were cool, calm, yeah. collected every single time they went down. So I'm hoping that's something he can bring here um, because Hook's going to need that. Like, is Hook still capable of dominating games? Like, I don't know if he's still capable of being, like, the consistent force that he was because it's, it's been a while. Like, he's had good events. He's had mm -hmm. great days. He's had great matches. But it hasn't been over, like, an extensive period of time. And... I don't know if that's all due to his teams um, because we used to see who it didn't matter what team he was on. He was taking over games, Bryce. Yeah, um, no, 100 percent. The, the thing about this roster is I have faith in the individual ability of these players when they're having a good day. Like you, we've, we've talked about these players at length. Every single one of them has done magic in the past, right? We know they have. There are highlight reels. There's everything. Like I said, with, like with Neptune, for instance, you know, he, obviously he was... Uh, painted as a, as a problem when he was in New York, went into challenges, dominate. I watched him do it, right? I watched him do it. Um, come back into, you know, the CDL. Will he do the same thing? I think it's it's so interesting because I just want to see this team gel and do well. And it kind of reminds me of LAG last year. They didn't have a good start and they slowly started to get better. If this team can do this with Marky there as well, because you also remember, this is a huge challenge for Marky, right? We know he did it with Ultra, but you've got to remember that that ended up being an all EU team. Mm -hmm. They had a lot of mutual respect coming in. Is this team going to give him the same respect? Are they going to allow Marky to coach them? Because being a coachable player is super valuable in the league right now because you can get people to go the direction you want to. And this team probably ha all has its strong ideas. You said about Arsenis, right? Arsenis has just come from basically almost never losing a series. Like, very rarely. They, yeah, the he expects to win every role. series he goes in. Yeah. Right. So, like... Is this going to be a bit of a culture shock for him if the team starts off slow? I don't think, from what I've heard, they're actually pretty good. A lot of people are looking at this team saying, hey, this is actually a pretty decent team this year and they should do very, very well. Will this team survive the entire year is a very interesting question. Uh, yeah, I mean, our season Spart will, that's for damn sure, right? Like they signed them to three year deals, Bryce, um, which I think was a good move for LAG. Uh, looking at the Los Angeles Gorillas, like uh, one of the biggest problems with the organization over time is like they make too many roster changes. They had so many different players start on their roster. They've had so many different players come in and out of their organization. They've had shifts in their coaching. Uh, they've had shifts in their sub spot. They had shifts in their starting roster like week, like almost weeks at a time last year. Uh, you know, I know they dealt with, you know, the gunless illness and things of that nature, but Still, they could not commit to a starting roster. So having our season spark, like locked in, committed to them is huge. And I think they're banking on the development of a guy like Neptune. And then Hook is just one of those aggressive SMG talents that you just kind of want to hold on to. Otherwise, somebody will snatch him up is, I guess, where their mind is at. Um, so that's what, in terms of the organizational standpoint, like that's what I hope. That, I hope they stick to this team throughout the year because it you can't, you can't expect them to come out the gates absolutely frying. Like this is, there's no core team here right like there's no these guys yeah. didn't like spartan hook played with each other for a bit but that's not like a core duo that has like a ton of reps together right that was like i would say that that was a fluke weekend where they caught fire and won i think it was 10 search and destroys in a row and something that you can't replicate that sort of magic so there's yeah. really not a huge foundation to build off for this team so it's almost starting from from scratch excuse me which is why I hope the organization sort of levels their expectation and, uh, you know, keeps this team throughout time. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I think this, I, in my opinion, this team should come out in the, in the top half of the CDL rosters. Like, that's where they should be. Do starting. you think that, though? Because if you pull up all well, the teams, I mean, Bryce, the league is tough. And I, I haven't even looked at, like, I haven't even ranked them yet, but it's really hard to just look at this roster and go, okay, they should be top six. You know what I mean? There's so many good teams. I don't know. I mean, I'm not going to name out. There's a few teams I would put below them. 
And I'm trying to justify. I mean, mid table is is definitely a safe bet. Also, by the way, we're talking about LAG and fringe right top half. I uh, I went to go and double check, including substitutes. I think this team has had something like 21 players in three years. They've had the most players, right? I didn't want to say that yeah. because I don't know that as fact, but I'm pretty sure they've went through the most players. The only team that might rival them, and I don't know, is because remember Toronto also the first year how big their roster was, but then they kept their team, so yeah. maybe not. But they had a bunch of substitutes. I think yeah. I think you're right. I think LAG has had the most players come in and out of their camp. Like they had blast at one point, Lacefield, yeah. Saints, Decimate, Aqua, Ricky. They had to have had the most Ake, teams. Ake started there. Like this is, yeah. this is insane. Like I'll just read it up. It's just like a who's who of players that have been in and out of the CDL. Um, yeah, some of these guys were only subs, but still, I mean, that counts towards your roster. Like yeah. they've had hella players. So I mean, clearly that's a pro that's been a problem for the organization. Like they've been willing to spend the coin, Bryce. They just haven't been able to get the players that they've wanted but they made these changes like kind of early on like they snatched up varsities he, he had to have been like one of the hottest commodities they got yeah. him that's a w right there's no way around that is a w for lag um and i would say in terms of like am players we like to gas up a lot of the challengers players bryce that have come into the cdl recently yeah spark deserves some of the most gas like he got a ton of gas when he won that event but he deserves some of the most gas like he is you know technically like the best prospect from last year he won an event and got mvp you know what i mean it's true <laughs> like this is real this is real talk the team was struggling but the guy won an event and was mvp yeah no 100 if anything though it was kind of a double-edged sword for the organization because they really didn't know what to do then they weren't expecting yeah, yeah. that to happen and it, I, I think it threw them because they were like hey we could win an event but we kind of want gunless back in but i don't know where we're going with this and then they started rapidly chopping and changing and trying to figure stuff out and that's led to to the off season right um you know seeing slasher and gunless have all gone do you think that They're that all, championship look, benefited them bryce um i think i think for the for the organization yeah it was a huge win for them but i don't think because so to give context lag were one of my dark horses last year because i kept seeing them improve which i thought was fantastic it's like if it, if i'm seeing a team i think are playing better and better call of duty slowly but surely it means that they are fixing their mistakes it means that they are working on it very very well and they are and you know any kind of improvement is very very good for a mm -hmm. roster because it shows that they're doing something right out of tournaments right it means that their practice is either going well or their vod review is going well or or they're figuring this out and and gelling as a team mm -hmm. when they won that tournament that all went in the bin yeah like they they went from great to terrible that's what i'm they, saying like, did it hurt lives. them did it hurt them long term like realistically because like i'm looking at like what they I mean, you still take the dub though right yeah you take the dub right but it's just like it's crazy how like the dominoes fall in call of duty it's like they did not think they were going to come into that tournament and win it given the situation and then like from then the high that they were at so how their season ended is it's pretty wild to look at um yeah like these guys like what well, they they ended up getting i'm looking at it right now so they immediately after that we had pro-am right they get dead last bryce and then they win one match or something in the major three qualifiers and then they get last at major three and then they get top eight at major four which isn't enough to make the cut and they don't make it to champs so it's just like it's so crazy <laughs> yeah it's fell apart and then like from major two right uh it was april 3rd right that's when they won that was the sunday yeah. until the major three qualifiers which was a month later they had made uh, a roster change right like the spart was not on the team like you win an event with spart you go into the program and i believe like the prime they just didn't make it out of groups um and then they made a roster change after that so it's hard it must have been hard for lag to even pinpoint like what was the problem you know what i mean like they they felt a duty to bring gunless back in because technically prior to the change he was one of their better players yeah. so yeah the, the organization they gotta they gotta do some soul searching and just commit to this team throughout the year because you don't ever want to run into that again yeah i hope so and i think i think now mark is over there i don't think mark is going to be keen on changes very very quickly um if he feels like it's working i don't think he'll change anything I think he, he he's used to it with Ultra working on their mistakes. Like we know how Ultra went last year. Yeah. They're on the cusp of being great many, many times. Um 
and then they just couldn't get it. But they they were determined to work on stuff. And if Marky's got that idea and said, "Hey, to the LA the LAG upper management stuff," and they and they give him what they need, and and the team does it as well, because you got to bear in mind it's not always the coaches that are putting pressure on for a change. Sometimes players are just stubborn and just want that player gone. Um, I don't know where they would go for their next roster change. I don't know whether or not, like, it sounds like almost a meme to say that Marky might go European because he has his roots there and would know <laughs> who to pull, who to pull in. Um, but I think I think this team's got good prospects. I gen I genuinely do. I, I really like the new look lag. I think uh, this team is is doing and this organization is doing a lot of right things. I'm just hoping that this team hits the right stride from the gate. Like I said, I don't expect them to dominate out of the gate. I don't think it's going to happen. Right. But I'm hoping with time, these players that have had somewhat of a rough ride in the last couple of years of the CDL or have been scapegoat or whatever else you want to say about them, that this is their new home. Okay. That they can find some stability and they can use that to really reestablish their stock. Because I, th I, I think unfairly... Some people have the stocks of these individual players lower than they probably could be. Whoa, whoa, Bryce. So that's kind of what I was going to touch on. Uh, I agree with that to an extent, but also like I have my core opinions and, and, and I know that's what people want to hear. So I'm going to blurt them out right now and sort of let's discuss them a bit. Um, with this LAG team, like with Neptune, no questions about it. The guy still has a ton to learn. Like I get that he definitely was the scapegoat for the New York team. Like it was not just his fault, but there's no doubt about it. He was making some questionable decisions in game. Uh, there were literally some games where it was solo his fault that they lost. Uh, and he went to challengers and he fried, but it's a different ball game. You're allowed to have more mistakes there. So like that guy still is like a question mark to me with this team alongside Hook, who also has, that has plagued him like his whole career. Uh, those types of issues, like, in game decision making especially in a game like this bryce that's like you have to be a little bit slower on rotation it you can get spawn trapped like legit and the way the spawns work how fat how easily they're influenced at times like these guys are gonna have to be on point so i'm worried about that and then my final point of contention here is like with marky b we spent a lot of time giving him praise and what he did with 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 the toronto ultra which is fantastic at the same time though I'm going to start bringing some coaches into question when it comes to like Toronto Ultra. I know it's not just the coach's job, but they had one of the most talented teams like I've ever seen uh, in the CDL era, and they never quite figured out hard point, right? So that was between the roster and Marky B, but like this team, if they start off weak and respawn, like besides our cities, who in there, our season Marky B, who in there is going to be able to have a voice in how to fix these issues, right? Like, it's got to be between them two. So those are the two guys in terms of leadership that I'm looking at. And then Neptune and Hook to like figure out in game how to not make these blunders that are costing their teams respawns in series. It might not happen every single series, but it will happen in crucial times. So uh, those are the improvements I think everybody across the board needs to make, uh, you know, between coaches and what I'm hoping for out of guys like Arcides and what I need to see out of guys like who can Neptune. Yeah, I think it's, I think it's an interesting, interesting take on it. I, th I, I would give them slightly more credit on this one. I think the, the biggest issue for me is not going to be uh, for our season and Mark. I think it's when they start losing those respawns, how the other three react. And, and is this going to be one of those where the team all thinks they know the right way to do it? Or is it going to be one where they all kind of agree on a general principle and work on that principle? That's that's the two difference in, in strategies that I think teams fall down at. Once you start losing, players tend to think they know what's best and then and they will blame a dozen different things over improving. And nothing really improves. Um I just want to make sure, like if if I was on if I was in charge of this team or whatever, or part of the LAG, I I just the culture has to be right from day one. I believe fully if this team can figure out how to communicate effectively and get on the same page, that there is enough talent here to make a serious run. But it is that part that worries me. It is the part where the stuff we don't see is what is, is what bothers me. You know, are we going to see a breakdown in this team? I, like I said, I'm not saying it's going to happen. I'm not sitting here saying I don't I don't believe in these players. I'm just saying that with this roster, that's what scares me the most because I think that there is a ton of talent here and every single one of these players, just bear in mind, has tasted success in the past. 
Yeah. And once you've tasted that, you believe you're the best. You know that. You, I mean, you should 100%. Have it now. Yeah, yeah. 100%. <laughs> you believe you're the best. Yeah, now I'm on the desk, so I wasn't the best. Yeah, but like, when you're looking at the team, though, like with RC, I think he will bring like the right vibes. Like, everybody loves Alec. Like, how could you not love playing with oh, him? And he's going to. Yeah. Way. And he's going to give a lot of grace to like Hook, Neptune. Um, and then Sparta's like a guy, he, he's not going to make too many mistakes. Uh, he, he plays pretty good Call of Duty um got to see it for a longer period of time but from what i saw last year like i really liked what i saw out of spart um so yeah he's gonna give him a lot of grace so i i agree with your point about about the vibes from day one like it has to be a good team culture I don't, let's not use the word vibes the good team culture because there will be arguments and stuff but the good thing here is like when there's arguments like mark has come from approving team so he's gonna have that re approved team so he's gonna have that respect for them and then rcds as well like, I feel like with Neptune's first team, he got a lot of flack uh, on that New York roster. Well, not first team, but the last year team with New York. Um, and Krim and Clay aren't exactly easy to deal with. I think RCs would be a little bit easier for Neptune to sort of submit himself to and be like, okay, yeah, my bad. I was wrong, you know? And, like, actually soak up the knowledge and not feel like RCs is coming at him and is, like, ready to drop him at the same time. And that's yeah. an environment where you can learn. You know what I mean, Bryce? Because if you're, if you feel like you're gonna get, bl I've been a guy in this situation before. If you feel like you're gonna get blamed, even if it wasn't your fault, you're less hesitant to actually like play for the team and like try to listen to those guys because you feel like they're setting you up to get smoked at the same time, right? You feel like they're like yeah. setting you up to get smoked so they can like be successful. It's like these little riffs that you have on a team. It's extremely toxic and you would think it wouldn't be a thing in the CDL, but Bryce, like I'm telling you, it really is. Like it really is still a thing. Oh, you don't, you don't have to tell me that a lot of pro players act like childs when, yeah. when it comes to, to figuring this out. The amount of stuff that we hear behind the scenes, there is a uh, there are not enough professionals in the CDL. I've said this before. Um, it's just it's just it's egos, and it always has been. I think the the best way to sum this roster up, by the way, is it's a proving team. Like mm -hmm. every single one of those players has something to prove. They know that there are positive and negatives to their track record in the CDL, right? Mm -hmm. Talent-wise, it's a positive. History-wise, and the teams they've been in, the situations they've been in, there are some negatives. So for every single player on this roster, the entire narrative of this year could change their career path, right? If asked, he's comes in this roster, he's not great or, or whatever. Like People will say, oh, the other three carried him in phase. You know, if he <laughs> yeah, has another kind of weird year <laughs> or he's up and down, people will say, oh, it's the same old Hugh again. Spart still wants to regain the glory of winning, you know, MVP and going to the championship, and they want to see him do it. Is yep. he going to be able to do it? Is, is Spart going to be able to prove that it wasn't a flash in the pan, which a lot of people don't think it is, by the way, and, and actually solidify himself as saying, hey, I'm here, this is my my standard, not what you guys think is, is my peak. Uh, and, and the same for Neptune, right? Like, he, he wants to redeem himself in the eyes of all the people who talked down on him last year and said he wasn't good enough or that he was the issue or that all the rumors that came or anything that happened. Every single one of these players has their own destiny to forge. And if this team can do well, it will change how everybody thinks of them because this is their opportunity to come into a new game with a roster. They're all first teamers. They're already lined up, ready to go. If they come out of the gates, good, not great, just good and look like a stable force throughout the season then you could say, hey, a lot of that other stuff doesn't really matter. These are the players, and that's what they really like. Facts. Yeah, I think that was a good way to sum it up. Uh, so I'm excited to see what LAG does. I know that it's like one of those teams where it might be hard as a fan to rally behind, but I think there's a lot of good storylines and players that you can pick from on that team. Uh, but another team, Bryce, uh, that I wanted to talk about today is the Boston Breach. Uh, Boston Breach, first year of the CDL last year. By all means, uh, Bryce, it was a solid year for the debut team. Like it, it was a pretty good year. Solid. Yeah, I think, yeah, they definitely, they definitely, they definitely peaked early. I think. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then, and then, kind of fell to the to the mid lower pack. Um, but there is there is some interesting things. Like I said, the their best players, like I think Methods was their best player for the first half of the year, mm -hmm. and then just becoming middle of the pack. Whether or not the game evolved past him, and he couldn't really reclaim that. But like Nero took over, and I was like, "Damn, this guy's good." He did him <laughs> like, and yeah. Vivid, yeah, yeah. They are they are really rocking it here. I mean, I I wasn't one hundred percent certain when they brought Vivid in for Capstall. I was like, "Is this is this going to work?" And then it did, and I was like, "Yeah, okay, that works. That that is definitely giving them more stability into it as well." 
Um, Whoa, the, the, I would challenge that though. They never placed think, higher think, without. Think, they never placed higher without cap. Yeah, but they, that's because of their 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 start of the year. This is uh, this is true. But I was kind of fed up of watching, uh, basically Boston Breach play the first hard point because it always felt like they just had a terrible first hard point, and then the rest of the series would be like I feel like they just kept taking people like distance games. If you got a Boston Breach game, um, and I think I think they played fundamentally better card, but it was probably too late in the year. Yeah, right, like I think they, they maybe just got exposed. Yeah, they got exposed a little bit. Some of their weaker maps that they never really got good at. Um, they just got exposed a bit towards the end. Uh, but yeah, it was, I, I think the year was a W. Like, they started off really hot. It was weird to me, though, like, not committing to the talent that was Capital. I thought he was very good, especially at Search and Destroy. Um, I know they felt like he was, like, the guy making mistakes, costing them games. Uh, nevertheless, though, Vivid is a, is a proven player. And he came in and he did his thing. So probably got similar sort of performance out of Vivid, if not a little bit better because he maybe made the dynamic for... Because Nero didn't start taking over games consistently until Vivid was on the team, if I recall correctly. Like, it really was the the them acquiring Vivid is when Nero sort of took flight. Um, but that leads I would, us... In, I would say he did it... I would, say, I would say he started to do it before, I think, that switch coming. He had some good games, but I feel like... If, uh, the start of the season was Methods and Capsidor. Like yeah, those yeah. Those are the two explosive players, essentially, and they'll, you know, calling it what it is. And then I feel like it switched. I feel like it it it, it started to go away from the capsule. Still, force and S and D. Um, method. I mean, methods was putting up outrageous numbers in, on, major, in uh, major two. Food. Yeah, yeah. Um, which was always not really going to be sustainable unless they just dominated the rest of the year. Um, and I and I feel like Nero really came. Into, I feel like Nero kept that ship pretty steady until they had the roster change. Oh, fair enough. Uh, I'd have to go back and look, but yeah, I mean, the second half of the season, the, he was a beast. Like he was their best player. Uh, but they make a roster change, Bryce, uh, and they bring in somebody that I am a huge fan of. You know this. All the town knows this. I love Big Wake. I think that uh, I think he's a really good player. Um, I, I love the way that he plays. He can use any weapon. Uh, he's a, he's a great slayer. He can be questioned at times for his, like his objective play. I don't really think that it's been that big of an issue as much as some others do. Um, I think he's been in a horrible situation uh, over there on Florida for quite some time. And now that he's free and he's on a team, uh, you know, with some true, real SMG slayers, I think he is going to shine. I think that that was a W for the Boston Breach. Maybe they should have made two changes. Uh, we don't know that we can't really... Can't really say that yet until the season begins, but I think getting Awakening is a W. I think he's the perfect player to bring in uh, replacing TJ. I think he's, you know, no slight to, to TJ. That's my boy. I think Awakening is like the same play style as TJ, but better in every way, uh, especially in respawn. Yeah. I think, the, so, so you said, it's interesting what you said there about double changes. So... I'm just going to address the elephant in the room. It's a, it's kind of a meme at the moment. Like people want beans in for methods. <laughs> like it's, it's, it's I heard you say that the other day. The franchise. He's player, their right? sub, He's right? The beans, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so so basically, what I want to point out here is I'm going to ignore this whole meme and Reddit thing about changing out methods for beans because beans playing well. What I will say is that they have what I like to see in a team, which is a good deep substitute roster. Yeah. Like. If they run into issues and want to make a change, Beans has the talent to jump straight into this roster and prop them up if somebody's failing. I think I think it's not a question of if we see Beans in the CDO this year. I think it's a question of when. Because if this team doesn't perform at some point, they have that player ready to go. They have him ready. And and a lot of people want to see him in the CDL. That pressure doesn't mean nothing when it comes to the team if they're not having the results, right? Mm -hmm. They they will use him. They want to see the fans want to see if Beans can perform in the CDL. They don't like I said the meme about methods, whatever. It's whoever they need to put him in for because I think he's going to do well out of the gate. I think like I said, I think it's one of those things that it's a double edged sword for the team, right? Yeah, you have that depth to put a substitute in, but the pressure will always be there to put that substitute in. Yeah, so Ooh, same so thing that happened to Ultra, right? With scraps. So let's scrapping. tell some of my fan base might not know who like Be who Beans is. He was on like that team of Vortex where I believe Josh was the coach. And yeah. uh he won a playoffs. He's won a ton of cups as recent as Vanguard. Like he was great at that game. 
And then in this game, I think he's uh, he's teaming with Sensor, right? And they've been playing pretty good. I, I was checking them scrims. I watched a little bit of the scrims the other day. Like people have respect for this for Beans, uh, and he's sort of like you know one of the guys that's next up. So like the pro am will be a huge a huge moment for him. Granted, they qualify, make it through the plan, and if he's as good as people are saying is, they will make it through Bryce, and that'll be interesting to see how he performs there. Yeah, I just, I just don't see him not playing this year. Like, he has to play, has to play. So, just some truth. I just want to double check like his roster and stuff and something. He was named the MVP for challenges in Europe uh, last year. This year, sorry. Really? So I think, yeah, he was named the MVP. Yeah, he. Yeah, I'm looking at. I just put it up right now. He was teaming with Furious Vortex and Wee Man, I believe. Yeah, yeah. So there's an interesting, there's an interesting dynamic in Europe, by the way. If you don't know this, Vortex and, and B Sport or Josh, as he's known now. Um, have this habit of finding these players they keep doing it like vordex if anything vordex is is one of the most underrated players in europe because he just keeps winning year on year this guy keeps winning but he hasn't been pulled up into into anything because the i think it goes back to like the epsilon days that people still throw some doubts on him against so he's tom teams. gravity of europe yeah <laughs> i think he's even more successful than gravity that's the that's the kind of the crazy thing well like, it's just, probably a little kind of, easier yeah, um, but he keeps finding, but he also keeps finding these players like year on year. That's impressive. These players. Play, his ex teammates constantly make appearances <laughs> in the top echelon. <laughs> that sucks, um, man. I don't mean to laugh. That just it's just unfortunate. Sometimes people yeah. know like the potential, and they're just like, ah, yeah. hit the other guy. And 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 Josh is so well, you know. Obviously, since Josh kind of retired from playing, he went, um, he went, he went into, he went back and forth. He played again. He went back to a coach. He's now coaching again. And he's, he was the Paris coach, uh, the Paris assistant coach in the first season of the CDL. Mm -hmm. He's now back doing that again um, to kind of come in here with Zed and, and, and shore it up. So I think, I think it's, it's an interesting roster. And I said, I don't think Bean sits in the background all year. I just, I just don't think he Who does. Who does he come in for on this team? Like there's, you're not coming in for awakening. You're not. You're not coming in for Nero. You, you, so You're not. I'll say this, but like those are very good points until someone doesn't play well. Or no, 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 no. Like the, I think. So here's the thing: I will always say, opinion is great, but if you can't change your opinion based on new information and the facts, like, and I don't. This is uh, very much a hypothetical, by the way. If Awakening shits the sheets, hypothetically, he won't. You're telling me in three months. They don't look at price, 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 price. It is a a non-starter. There's no point to discuss that. He won't. Not in a game like this. It's not. It's not. But I mean, sure. If if we're just you know throwing shit into the sky and hoping it sticks, like yeah, maybe. But Bryce, well, yeah, he won't. It's a competitive year. It's a competitive. It year. is where, a competitive where, year. But where but, where do you start saying hey? If the team's not playing well, we need to look at we need to look at issues. Well, are, this is a, this is the same thing that we've seen other times. Like it's not easy to drop any of these players. They're all very very good. That's why they're in this roster, right? Yeah. No. And yeah. You, you, Go ahead. If the, if this team can maintain like a top four, top five, then maybe I'm wrong and we won't see beans. But if they can't, if if they do have some issues, then they have the depth for it. And I and I feel like. That organization, with the hype around their substitute, it's the same thing as Scrappy. Like, how much last year did people want Scrappy and Ultra from the get-go? Yes, like very straight true. Straight away. Very right? true. Beans has got... A, Beans maybe not have as much gas around them because he's not quite as loud as Scrappy is. But, like, there is still some expectation that they want to see this player perform. And I don't know where they would change him in. Mean, like I said, people want to change out Methods. I think Methods is one of the hardest players to change out because he is he is the face of the franchise. Yeah, because he, he doesn't technically him. he doesn't re like if you if you break down the game, he doesn't make like these game changing plays that are losing you games. He's a solid player. Um yeah. and so so it's hard. And to your point, I think that's one of the most interesting talking points of a team that we have in the CDL headed into the season. With the Boston Breach, you have your two SMGs who are, are pretty quick and nasty like vivid led aggression stats for like two years running nero's great at search and destroy explosive and you have methods and awakening who both in their own right are very hard to, to drop uh so it's one of the most interesting talking points is like what does the management do when push comes to shove because do bryce like i don't expect this team to come out and win the first couple of events i expect them to be very competitive and be in the top half this is a team i do expect to be in the top half so it's like 
they're going to have a, a tug and war all year. Like if this team isn't, like you said, top four consistently. And that is a hard one, man. Like I think uh, it's horrible. It's a horrible decision for management to make. <laughs> yeah, it is. It, it, it's tough. It's, that's the double-edged sword I was talking about. Yeah, that it is. is. The double-edged sword, right? You get a great substitute, so you have that depth in your roster. But then, like, if you have to put him in because your team is already supposedly so strong, it's not like going to be like a rocket upgrade. You're not going, mm -hmm. oh, there's somebody in here absolutely so don't just know, terrible, yeah. right? Every single one of these players we've seen perform. There's just no, there's just no easy switch. It's not like a, it's not like a, a an easy decision. To go, oh yeah, but he's going to that that'll change the roster instantly. Yeah. Um, but like I said, it's it's a, it's an incredibly agonizing decision for these coaches and these players because none of them want to sit out. No, all of them have the pedigree to be in at this roster yeah. and do well. And I and I th I agree with you that I think just looking at them on paper, if Awakening comes in and just locks this team together for them and and he's in this new environment because i think the florida environment i just it just didn't seem like that team that team was like great at points but it seemed like their consistency was a level below that well and they never really seemed to get over that hump well apparently they were the best team in scrims that's what i always heard from all the other pro teams is like they were impossible to play in scrims um which just tells me that there was like a a, a switch out flip in real games i don't know if it was nerves or maybe just franticness or something uh nevertheless i think methods if it, I, don't, I don't know i it, i don't think it would be awakening that w was the guy that maybe was getting frantic or messing up the comms because he's so cool calm and collected all the time we have him in interviews and stuff but if it is something that he's dealing with methods would be a guy that can help him out calm him down and uh sort of bring him uh back to earth in in those situations like I said, I don't think it was awakening, but something was happening from scrims to matches with that Florida team for years, Bryce, that they were not able to figure out. So it must just feel nice for awakening to be out of there and have some different guys by his side, which is why I'm expecting him to even have a better year. Yeah, I see. It's, it's an interesting one because, like I said, I think the most interesting thing for me is any team that has a good substitute. I'm always kind of going on about this, and you know, you speak, hear me speak about it in the green room. I believe that teams should have that depth to them. It should be a goal. Same thing with map pools. Same thing with the team rosters. You need to have those options because you can put together the best team you can figure out at the start of the year. But things go wrong. Very, yeah, but very often it's not going to go well. The league is competitive. Every other team is putting in their best, their best players. Not everybody can win. Not everybody can be top four. Not everybody can even be top six, right? And if you can't do that, then the fans are upset. Your your sponsors won't be as, as as willing to engage. People will just be trashing you on social media, and the pressure mounts over and over again because you're not in this league to to just have a good time. You're in this league to win. You're in this league to get championships. You're in it to make champs. And there has to be somebody to make those horrible decisions, saying, "Hey, we have to do this. We need to get better." And that's why it is it is never easy. For any analyst talent or anybody of that kind of that mindset to say, hey, this is a good team or no, this is a bad team. Yeah, headed in prediction every yeah. team's a good every team's a good team. It should be a good team. Don't get me wrong, there are a couple at the moment that we're not so sure on. <laughs> but, <laughs> Most teams but, are poised to be better than they were last year, which is yeah. crazy to think about. So 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 how so how do you do it? Like and also bearing in mind we're going off no information. Like we we've seen yeah. some scrims, so you know, full out there. The talent watch scrims in the background at the moment. But I've always said scrims are one thing, but you shouldn't be winning scrims. Realistically, scrims are a great chance for you to concentrate on stuff you need to do. Try something new out. Go for a different rotation. Focus on a single rotation instead of scrims, just to make sure you nail it and break setups. Learn from the enemy team. It's not about getting that 250 to the to the whatever the other team gets in hardpoint. It's about making sure that when you win or lose that match, that you are better than you were before you went into it. Mm -hmm. That's the idea. That is the entire idea of scrims. It's why, Max. like, people go, "Oh, this team's been dominating in scrims," and sometimes that's been true, nameless. But as we, as you know very well, there was a team I called out during the season doing well in scrims, and they went terribly at the tournament, just <laughs> absolutely awful. Um, and like I said, it's not scrims that win; it's those wins and tournament days. And 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 I I hope that we we see these teams when they come into this situation. I hope every team does well, basically almost every single team. Um, 
But the truth of it, they can't. You, you can't have that many winners. It just doesn't work that. I think Vanguard uh, was probably the exception to the rule. Is most one hundred percent was. Yeah, it one hundred percent was. And you know, we've had games where there's been you know multiple teams win, but nothing quite like Vanguard. I don't think we're gonna have a year like that again. I, I truly don't. No. Um, especially with the way this game is very punishing. I feel like it's very controllable at times. There are some crazy spawns here and there, but somebody will figure it out. Hell, somebody figured out Vanguard, right? Thieves did. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think uh, I think you hit it there at the end, putting a button on it. Like uh, these are this is a team that it's gonna be interesting, especially out the gates, and then how they deal with having that substitute player. Uh, we saw Toronto uh, deal with that last year, and it results in them making a change at the end of the season. Probably wishing they did it a little bit earlier. Uh, but yeah, if you're a Boston fan, those are some of the things that you can focus on. If you aren't, that's uh, maybe some things that'll make you want to support them this year headed into the season. Some new talent on the roster. Uh, but yeah, Bryce, uh, go and show him some love, guys. If you don't know who Bryce is, if you maybe just watch my content, he is a caster for the COD League. So he's the guy calling those games, screaming his mind off. And uh, he's been working really hard, uh, getting us going, making sure we're, we're on point with the storylines heading into the season so we can keep you guys entertained. His socials are down below. And uh, we're going to be doing some other content, Bryce. Uh, if you want to, can we tell the people about that yet? Uh, or yeah, what? sure, sure. Go ahead. Um, we, we, so, so essentially for this season, we are, we are putting together some interesting stuff to help every fan and engagement to try to figure out like how to feel about the the stuff that's going on there's a lot of stuff that comes out of social media and everything else and the truth is as talent we think you deserve better we yeah, think you we deserve do. more of the inside track more of the information that allows you to form your opinions and you can react to ours in a very uh, concise format that allows you to join us on this journey as we look at every player and team this year and that and that's the focus the focus for this year uh, for me and I know a lot of my colleagues and talent team feel the same is we want to highlight the stories behind the players and these teams' journey throughout the entire year we had some great moments last year and we want more of them yeah I, we know a lot of you guys are you know fans of some of these teams that maybe don't get as much airtime or as much love and stuff like that so we are going to focus on everybody equal talk about all these teams the big storylines uh, and get it out there for you guys because at the end of the day we're all just big fans as well like we're just a little bit more yeah. closer to it than you guys are and um if you guys enjoyed this that'll only be better so make sure you guys stay on the lookout for that it'll be on all, all the talent socials hopefully um and we'll see you guys then but bryce thank you for joining me i had a lot of no fun worries. talking about these teams uh appreciate you guys for watching comment what you guys think about these two teams and the future of their rosters these storylines let me know what you think, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Take it easy.